Simplified Chaos, episode 109. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Hello, hello, wonderful friends. Welcome to another episode of Simplified Chaos. This is Jillian, and I'm with my co-host and husband, Nicholas. What's going on, folks? Hope you all are having an amazing week. We've got another great episode here for you today. Jilly, what are we getting into? So I'm thinking about this episode being called Just Never Stop Daydreaming. Ooh. You shifted. I took your idea and I tweaked it a bit, but it's going to come full circle and you're going to see how it aligns. All right. A little <laughs> uh, little surprise before we get started. <laughs> I can handle it. We'll see how this goes. But before we dive into that topic, Jilly, what are you grateful for this week? Well, in, uh, in lieu of... A fabulous birthday weekend getaway. I'm grateful for my mom and dad hooking up, man. Oh, mm, good mm, call. Mm, mm. Uh, I guess I'm grateful for that as well. <laughs> and so is Lucille. Yeah, so grateful for my mom being a fucking badass, giving birth to me. I think the first epidural she got didn't work. She got a second one. And then she was like sick as a dog after delivering me. Um, But according to my dad, Len Bias had the greatest game of his life once the night I I was born. So dad had a hoot. Mom was just not. (laughs) So I have great... I guess he didn't have enough entertainment. (laughs) It is interesting just to hear perspectives of your birth story and you know, mom's perspective and then dad's perspective. It's, it's quite comical to think about it. And it'll be interesting to hear us tell Lucille's birth story. If she wants to know about it one day, just hearing your perspective and then mine. Well, it's a very similar perspective as your dad's uh, story with your birth, because something great happened the night that Lucille was born and the Washington Capitals, which has been my hockey team since I was a young lad finally won their first Stanley Cup, (laughs) and it just really completed what was an amazing, amazing day that I'll never forget. You and I both. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But what about you? What are you grateful for today? Well, I'm grateful for our family, namely your sister, brother-in-law, and your mom for, you know, tag teaming it and watching Lucille while we had a little getaway this past weekend to Leesburg, Virginia, a much needed getaway and really what kind of is the catalyst for this episode, which most of our weekends tend to be the catalyst for our episodes. So why wouldn't this past weekend be any different? But, uh, you know, just extremely grateful for the support we have and being able to get away for a night so yeah agreed yeah that was uh it's it's clutch so without further ado jilly how do you want to kick this off because i think we uh segue really nicely there (laughs) (laughs) yeah so we went away to leesburg virginia and nick and i had an amazing time just trying to like slow down not do not be productive. Let's say that. Um, we needed to be not productive. Yeah. And it's really, I, I think I was telling you that it's really hard not to want to think like, we don't have Lucille. What can we get done? It's really weird to not have Lucille and just be like, all right, let's let's lay in bed and just hang out here if we want yeah. to. Or, you know, let's sit in a coffee shop for an extra 30 minutes, even when our coffee's done, just because we feel like it or it's a cozy spot. So it's... Well, it was even nice just to sit in a coffee shop for the first time in, I can't tell you how long. I don't even remember the last time we did that. Yeah. I mean, sitting in a coffee shop and actually drinking a beautiful latte out of a mug and getting to see the the latte art. It's funny, like the small, tiny things that I've missed with the whole pandemic. And that is one of them. Just being able to 
see the aesthetically pleasing coffee foam in such a way that I'm just like enamored by it. It's just beauty. It's a beautiful thing. Um, anyway, so yeah, you were mentioning that it was really beneficial for you to step outside um, of the house of our normal day to day and just to remember the big picture or our big goals um, and to kind of put that in perspective because right now it is a difficult time just because as in any part of your life you know, there's a lot going on mm-hmm. Sp- specifically now there's a lot of moving parts with trying to declutter our house even more so to get it ready to sell and we're learning more and more about selling a house like you need to get 50 percent of your stuff out your closets need to be half full like there's a lot of things that i'm learning in order to get top dollar for a house <laughs> that we have to do and you know time is of the essence and uh we do live with another family so there's a lot of things that are on our plate at the moment and we're working full-time jobs and we're trying to be the best parents for lucille and you know keep our sanity and our mental health like all of the things and I think you were just mentioning that you really needed to kind of like see see the end goal just to kind of like remember all the good stuff that's that's like this is leading up to. Not that life isn't good now, but I think once in a while we need to daydream more just to remember like what our big goals are and it brings that those butterfly feelings in you when you like talk about your dreams and you like visualize it and you know, we were talking about our new home and like you know, what, what do we want to invest in when we get there? And, you know, we talk about like what, how we want to decorate it or the purposes of rooms. And all of that to me is like daydreaming. You get giddy just thinking about like the future and what you're working towards. So that was probably long winded just to say we really needed to stop and daydream. (laughs) I was going to interrupt you several times, but you were on a roll there. So I was like, I'm just going to let you go. I appreciate that. But yeah, when, and I think the idea for this episode came when we were in the coffee shop talking, which is another reason why we need to start hitting up coffee shops more often because good ideas happen. But you're right. It was, I would say the last few weeks have been a little stressful for me. And it's just, I'm, I'm a planner and I'm also one of those people who can see like every single imperfection when it comes to like looking at the house and just thinking about the work that I'll need to do to get some of this stuff ready. Like keep in mind that this house really, you have lived in it for what, 30 years almost? Yeah. Um, 28 years. So that's a long time for things to just kind of, you know, be in the house i mean obviously we we clean often we've decluttered and and we've made it but i mean there's still just those small things that you see that i'm probably just noticing because i'm in this house all the time and that somebody who's coming and walking through the house it just isn't going to notice but it's those things that are just kind of like keeping me up at night and and i am you know writing down a list of things to do but one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that our real estate agent has not been to the house yet because he wanted to wait until the kitchen renovation was done just so that he can kind of take a look at the house, see what he's working with here. And then obviously we're going to listen to him for staging advice, but I'm like really trying to anticipate what he may or may not say. And and it's good and bad at the same time. (laughs) It's good because we are getting stuff done now. Like we had a very successful weekend after we got back from our trip to Leesburg, but I'm just kind of like thinking like, Oh, we've got to do this. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do this. And you know, work has been pretty busy too. So it's like kind of all just compiling. And I'm really glad that, you know, you actually booked this trip a while ago. So the, the timing couldn't be more perfect, but it was great again just kind of stepping out stepping away having some time away from lucille just so that we can do nothing but at the same time you know talk about the future and really just kind of put everything back into perspective and and really just get excited for what's going to happen in the next couple of months because it is a very exciting time there's some big changes you know moving forward with us and yeah, I'm I'm just like totally rejuvenated. Like I'm I'm you know back. I'm not worried about the stuff. You know, I'm I'm ready to wait and to hear what uh 
what our real estate agent was going to tell us on Wednesday. And yeah, it's all, it's going to be all good is at the end of it. It's like, it's going to be all good. And we can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Though. <laughs> yes. And, uh, we were both long winded. No, I think it's all good stuff. Cause I think, you know, it is interesting when I was like diving into this topic, you know, I'll, I do a lot of my research for podcasts when Lucille is napping on me. I call them nip naps because she's still, I still breastfeed and she falls asleep. But that's usually when I have time to kind of just sit and be with my thoughts and like kind of think about like, where's the direction of the podcast episode going? Like I know what inspired it and I'm just kind of trying to think of like a theme, like what can we talk about and really dive into that we've learned, you know, and just the idea of daydreaming popped in my head, you know, the whole notion where, you know, teachers always like, you know, get your head out of the clouds or, you know, on the softball field, we say, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's said at least once a game. And then as I was diving more into that topic, I was, I was finding studies and research just talking about the benefits of daydreaming. And I thought it was really interesting because I think sometimes we don't give ourselves enough time and space and think of it as a good thing just to be with ourselves and our thoughts and to actually daydream about, you know, I think daydreaming gets us excited about life. It kind of ignites that spark Mm -hmm. back into us when you might feel stuck or, you know, in a lull and a hole. And I think setting intention for a getaway or time to just be like, you know, I just want to be with my thoughts in a, a space that makes me happy that, um, I don't know, sparks joy, like being in a coffee shop, like I think something ignited in us that we're like, man, this feels good. And then we just started spewing out like our own little daydreams about our home and our, you know, our new future in Charlottesville. And uh, I had some, a little blurb about just, this is not the be- this is not the resource, but I just wanted to share this because I thought it was interesting. Um, it said daydreaming can be a useful tool to help keep people mindful of their relevant goals such as imagining future success of a goal to motivate accomplishing a difficult or uninteresting task, which there are a lot of uninteresting tasks. Oh, there definitely Tedious tasks having to be done, and I think we definitely needed to step out of that to just go back to daydreaming to be like, this is all worth it. Yeah. Try not to get so stressed and in it, you know? Um, And it just said how, you know, creative thinking is another function of daydreaming, and it's associated with, you know, it just increased creativity. So I mean, it did. I mean, think about everything that we got done when we got back yesterday and we were being creative with how we're staging things like just that one single day of getting away, resting. And and it wasn't even a full day. I mean, we did some work even Saturday morning before we, we headed out to, to get away. But like, you know, we came back fully charged, you know, with less than 24 hours of being away. And then we came back in, you know, took care of some a lot of stuff yesterday that that was you know going to be a huge help and make things a lot less stressful further down the road so i mean you know it was just you know it's kind of like when you when you're at work and they say you know step up and take a break you know even a five minute break you can come back and you know you're you're back to being fully productive but like you know just being able to again daydream and and just think about the future i mean it, it just sets a spark in you to to you know, push forward. And, you know, it was, it was a huge stress. I I don't feel stressed right now at all. Whereas, you know, I would say Friday night, the day before we left, we were still stressed. And I was like almost projecting my stress on the, you channeling you how stressed I was. And you're like, I don't need to hear it. I was was trying my best. I was like, I'm just letting you know that if I'm being a little crazy, (laughs) this is the reason why I was up until one o'clock thinking about stupid shit. But yeah, yeah. no, no. And I'm, it, it's a weird thing because it's like I wanted you to feel open to talk to me about what you were feeling, but at the same time, when you were like pinpointing like all of these <laughs> things in the home, like we're gonna have to fix that, that's gonna have to. I'm like, oh my god, Nick, like, like take a step back. Can we just wait to hear what we have to fix yes. before you Thank point you. out every tiny blemish flaw in our home? Like it was to that point where I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta think the about baseboards, how to, Hans, the baseboards. I think about how to handle this. No, but I think like. <laughs> this just goes for anything like you know whether whatever you're in i think nothing is more important than stepping out and taking a break yeah 
you know, I don't think we would have planned this trip a week ago knowing, like, I don't think you would have agreed to it knowing that everything we have to do, because even now, like, we're, you know, we're planning going to your parents' house next weekend to work. You know, you're still thinking, like, well, I think we should cut it shorter because we have to get back and do stuff. But I'm wondering if this is going to change your perspective a little bit, just knowing how refreshed we were after having that break and what it did to our cup and battery, so to say, to like just spark that like energy back into us that we needed to like carry on and like get through the tedious and the non-interesting tasks. So I will say that it will depend on what we hear on Wednesday, but at the same time, now I understand the importance of stepping away and you know, we still have time. So like it, it, it time is, it's funny in the, in this market right now, time is actually on our side because we, we feel like we're going to be able to turn around and sell this thing pretty quickly that now there's some benefits to us getting the house in the market when we plan on putting the house on the market, just because it is your spring break and it'll make things a little bit easier. But if we don't hit that target, it's not the, the worst thing in the world. And I'm really starting to realize that as well. So that's also kind of helping. So yeah, I will enjoy the time at my parents' house, you know, and, and doing our little uh, um, work away from home kind of week that we've we've had the nice routine of having since November, December. So, yeah, no. If anything, this past weekend taught me that it, you know we don't have to do everything right now. And this one quote sticks with me, and I think most really good realtors always say it, and we heard it from our realtor. But it, to me, it kind of applies to anything in life. It's like the best time to sell your house is when you sell your house. <laughs> like yeah. whenever it feels right for you, whenever the house is ready, when like that's the best time ultimately. Like don't pick these specific dates or like, you know, it's just, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be at this certain time, you know. Obviously there's times when markets are good or bad, but you know, when our house is ready to sell and it's done, we'll put it on the market and that's the best time for us. I think we have to kind of go with our own pace and listen mm-hmm. to us as well because we're important as well, just yeah. as important as the market and whatever happens, you know, but um, that kind of stick with sticks with me too. Like even if we don't meet certain deadlines, it's like, you know what, when the house is on the market, the house is on the market, yeah. that's when it's going to sell. Well, and one of the things that it, we have to kind of remember too and just thinking about how easy things have been up to this point as far as making the decision to move to Charlottesville, finding the place that we wanted to, you know, take our family to. Like, it, it's been a very easy process to, up this far. And, and obviously, we are our own worst enemies when it comes to, you know, thinking of things and, and trying to anticipate what th- people are going to say, what people aren't going to say. And I just need to recognize that and just, you know, again, keep the end in mind and everything's going to be all good. So, yeah. Big dreams. Big dreams. (laughs) Yeah. Anything else there, Jilly? I just have a really fun resource, so it may be a little bit longer than usual. No, go for it. Is that cool? We, we, were, we kept this uh, episode pretty concise here, so All go right. ahead and uh, drop a resource for them. All right, so I found this blog post from Psychology Today. and oh, the that's type, a good site. The, thank you. The, no, it really is. I, I get a lot of my stuff from there. Thank you. Wellness professional over yeah. here. Uh, the title of it was, Why Daydreaming is Good for Us. At first blush, all this daydreaming might sound counterproductive and even unhealthy, but new research is beginning to show that it might not be. According to research published in the Creative Research Journal, daydreaming and pretend play are associated with greater creativity in children. For many kids, fantasies form a basis for social activity with their friends, a way to explore their interests, and a vehicle for engaging in creative pursuits like drawing or storytelling. Novel solutions to problems can even crop up in daydreams. Fantasy-based daydreams can lead to disappointment. This was interesting. Okay. Emphasizing how we wish our lives would be but aren't. Mm. Realistic daydreams, on the other hand, show us what might actually be possible for our lives. They give us mental practice pursuing important goals before we have to invest any real time or effort. Simply choosing a real-life goal you're hoping to accomplish during the next several months 
Then over about 20 minutes, close your eyes and envision yourself pursuing that goal as realistically as you can. This almost reminds me of yeah, manifesting. I was, I was getting ready to say that. Um, don't skip to the payoff like you normally would in a fantasy-based dream. Instead, vividly see yourself working on and succeeding at each step you'll need to take. Though having our heads in the clouds all day long probably isn't a good idea, when done in appropriate ways and at appropriate times, daydreaming can actually help us be more successful in life. And I completely agree with all of that. Like, I get the whole keeping it realistic. Um, I think it's fun to have, you know, you can get into, like, imaginary stuff. I think kids more do that than adults. Sure, sure. but I could totally see like the power in, I mean, I call that realistic daydreaming what we did this past weekend. Oh, and it always, yeah, there wasn't anything that was far fetched or anything no. like that. It was, you know, keeping everything in mind, talking about what we we're going to do with the house, what budget we're setting for yeah. the new house. And, you know, it was, it's all things that are going to happen at, at one point or another. And, and now it's, it's, a you know, now we know that with the end in mind, what the end is, what is that process that's going to get us there and trying to visualize that and, and make it as easy as possible. So yeah, no, I I think, um, daydreaming, especially when it's things that, you know, you're manifesting that, yeah, it'll, it'll all come true. And, and, you know, the more that you kind of think about it, uh, the more you're going to be able to put, uh, things in place in order for you to get to that end goal. So and reading this makes me think about that in a parent's perspective too. Just like if I see my students in class, mm-hmm. you know, not as focused or, you know, doing something else or or even Lucille, if you can, you know, it, it just makes me more mindful of that. Just knowing that being alone with her thoughts, like having that time and space to just think or, you know, I, I never know what's going on in anyone's head, but just giving her that space and time just to kind of talk to her about like, hey, like, what are you thinking of? And just kind of motivating her to keep doing that mm-hmm. and to think creatively and how, how good that is for us. And I think you're going to think this is hysterical. So there is actually a sport in South Korea <laughs> that's called the Space Out Competition. What? It, it's, it's done every year and it's a contest to see who can stare off into space the longest without losing focus or dozing off. I thought that was hysterical. (laughs) It said, um, I'm so glad for real sports. Okay. So it's called, (laughs) it says whoops. Yang, the visual artist who created the event in 2014 said it, it's designed to highlight how much people have been overworking their brains and how much they stand to gain by taking a break. Interesting. I would lose in literally 30 seconds. We just got to practice, baby. (laughs) Just got to practice. So, uh, South Korea, I see you. Let's uh, let's start some space out competitions uh, in the in the home. I know you'd like a good yeah. competition. Let us know how that's going for you, folks. <laughs> Please, in the comments or personally message us and just let us know how your spacing out adventures are going. And honestly, when I hear this, it makes me think of manifesting, meditation, like anything where you're sure. just like still with your thoughts. Oh, yeah. So I think it's fun how they kind of gamified it, calling it like a competition. Again, it's all about making it a game and that's I wonder what, what that metal looks like <laughs> it's a cloud <laughs> it probably is the golden cloud oh uh, yeah so i thought you would get a kick out of that i was like that's pretty it's like it's, it's a sport about nothing <laughs> oh god the seinfeld of sports <laughs> yes yes it is all right jilly you got a quote of the day for us i do drop it this quote is by gloria steinem I just thought you were going to say Gloria Stefan. I, I was going to get not. really excited. I did not. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of her song. Get on your feet. There you go. And turn it upside down. Get on turn your daydream. Around. No, that doesn't sound good. Sorry. Um, we'll edit that out. No, we won't. <laughs> all right. The quote is, dreaming, after all, is a form of planning. Uh, confirmed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So if anyone was like the super productive minds, like daydreaming is a waste of time. Oh, wait a minute. It is productive. It is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And how about a take action challenge? You've guessed it, folks. It is to schedule time to daydream about your real life big goals. Daydream more. Oh, baby. Dream. All right, folks. That's going to do it for today's episode. 
If you like this episode, please do us a favor and help us spread the message. You can do this by writing a review or simply by sharing this episode with a friend. And remember, sharing sparks a conversation, conversation leads to action, and action is how we're able to live a happy and intentional as hell lifestyle. We want to thank you all for listening today, and we will see you again next week. Woohoo! See y'all later.